we usually talk about power consumption in kilowatts and power plants in megawatts. Today, Tata Power inaugurated a new plant which talks about 2.4 gigawatt. No wonder the stock was on fire up nearly 7%. It is one of the biggest multi-baggers in the large cap space. And we'll talk about Tata Power more in the nugget section today. Hi everyone, welcome to the episode of 10 September. Today it was a turn of Divi's lab up 5%. I believe there was a lot of FI related buying in Bharti Airtel today. And if you are long in the market, you would want that to continue. The insurance companies were sulking today, SBI Life, HDFC Life. Very clearly more stocks in green than red. Yesterday I mentioned that insurance sector may come under pressure today. It did and there were deep cuts. The sector was down 1.2%. I made this dashboard slightly better. Most insurance companies are far, far off from the 52 week low. And most of them are at a stone's throw from their 52 week high. Telecom had a lot of interest today. Airtel up 2.3%. Vodafone also decided to go up 2.5%. Four of the five big sectors were in green today. As a result, the graph was totally in favor of bulls. In fact, only one beer was there actually insurance. Oil and gas did not have major cuts beyond oil, which is Oil India Limited. These graphs are evolving rapidly. There are some changes today. See this line. From yesterday's close to today's close, Nifty spent most of the day above this line, which is a very good sign. Bank Nifty also, after 11 o'clock, spent most of the time above the line. TCS was above the line. Look at Airtel, not a single point below the line. Same with Infosys, LNT. HUL spent considerable time below the line. It was a bit bearish, which is reflective of its price also. Nifty had a good trading range, 1% nearly, 226 points. Opened with a slight gap up, came down, but then went up continuously. A bit of profit booking towards the end. Let's check Bank Nifty. Opened with a gap up, came down, went up. Minor correction towards the end of the day. The trading range for Bank Nifty was pretty low, 370 points. This range was 800, 900 points the previous two days. The stock worth highlighting today is Airtel, 2.4% up. These sticks are worth reasonable money in the options market. 38 point trading range. RSI wise, Airtel is still looking good. There is further legroom left. Similarly, Infosys had a good trading range today, 2%. Just kept getting better and better. A bit of profit booking towards the end. The graphs are looking good for Infosys also. Most of the banks came under profit booking towards the later part of the day. Last one, one and a half hour. Bajaj Finance was down whole day below the line. Same with PFC. IFC was up a bit today, 1%. PFC's trading range was amazingly high today, 3.5%. But it was on the downside. Heavy profit booking continues. It is not in an overbought zone. The moving average is also looking fine. Most of the defense shares had a reasonable outing today. HL spent the time above the line, BL above the line, Musgaon Dock, Cochin Shipyard, Parallel Dynamics, GRSE was flat. Vedanta went ex-dividend today, so it came crashing down 4.4%. Same story as Hindustan Zinc, it will probably go down tomorrow also. But mostly Metal Pack is losing interest right now. The volumes are thinning for the most of the heavyweights. Nifty and Bank Nifty both had their second consecutive good day. Nifty IT was up most 1.73%. TIs sold very little today. FIs continued to buy. Nifty Energy was up 0.8% thanks to Tata Power. Bharti ATL led the rally today 2.3%. On bad days, HUL holds the fort. On a good day, it goes through profit booking down 0.8%. Market did not like the Apple event. Such a big event, only one button added to iPhone. Everything slightly better, slightly bigger. All the goodies they talked about will be released at some point of time once they get regulatory and federal approvals. It was a no event, nothing new, nothing innovative. We are now 5 paisa away from 84. Brent continues to be below 72. 17 stocks down, 33 up in Nifty. TCS, Airtel, HCL Tech, Infosys and DV Labs, they were taking Nifty up. HDFC Life, Bajaj Finance, Bajaj FinServe, HUL, SBI Life, they were dragging Nifty. Some improvements in the graph here also, Adani Enterprise and Tata Steel are most away from their 52 week high. With a huge uptick today, Divi's Lab is the most greedy. The insurance companies, SBI Life, HDFC Life, they are next. Next 50, 22 stocks down, 28 up. The leader today was Tata Power. Next was Geo Financial, Jindal Steel, Zomato, Hevels, PEL. 
वॉट वॉज टाउन टूडे वेदांता आईसीआईसी लोमबार्ड पॉवर फाइनेंस आर ई सी चोलामंडलम इन आई टी विप्रो इज फार्देस्ट फ्रॉम फिफ्टी टू वीक हाई टेन परसेंट जोमैटो हैज गॉन अप मोस्ट फ्रॉम इट्स फिफ्टी टू वीक लो ओनली वन स्टॉक विप्रो विच इज नॉट ग्रीन एच जी वी एन एंड टाटा पावर वर द क्लियर विनर्स टूडे बट द लार्ज कैप्स एन टी पी सी पावर ग्रिड देवर अप वन पॉइंट सेवन परसेंट ईच दे आर नियरली टू एंड हाफ और थ्री एक्स द साइज ऑफ टाटा पावर सो द कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन वॉज सेम ऑयल इंडिया कंटिन्यूज टू ब्लीड दिस इज द ग्राफ ऑफ ऑयल इंडिया इट हैज बीन करेक्ट सिंस द इंक्लूजन न्यूज इन टू एम एस सी आई गॉट ओवर इट विल फॉल मोर ओनली इट हैज अ वेरी हाई पी सेवनटीन राइट नाउ डबल ऑफ ओ एन जी सी थैंकफुल एम आर पी एल वॉज अप अ लिटिल टूडे थ्री परसेंट आई एम स्टिल ऑन अबाउट एटीन और नाइनटीन परसेंट लॉसेस सो इट नीड्स टू डू लॉट मोर देन वॉट इट डिड टूडे नियरली ऑल स्टॉक्स इन फूड एंड टोबैको वर अप एच यूएल केम अंडर अ बिट ऑफ प्रॉफिट बुकिंग बट वॉल्यूम्स कंटिन्यू टू बी गुड इन बोथ सेक्टर्स अदानी विलमर इज मोस्ट अवे फ्रॉम फिफ्टी टू वीक हाई ट्वेंटी एट सेक्टर इन द ग्रीन टूडे एरोस्पेस एंड डिफेंस एवरीथिंग एक्सेप्ट सोलर इंडस्ट्रीज वॉज अप मारुति इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ईवी सो इट वॉज अप अर्सेंट बजाज ऑटो अप वन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट वरुण बेवरेज इज फेल बिट इट इज ट्वेल्व परसेंट अवे फ्रॉम फिफ्टी टू वीक हाई द एल्कोहल स्टॉक्स वर गुड डिलाइट केम अंडर प्रॉफिट बुकिंग एशियन पेंट्स वॉज अप कोल पैक लुकिंग गुड Today, construction engineering saw some buying. L N T, R V N L, I R B, N B C C, everything saw buying. However, cement was down. Home building sector also saw some buying today. This sector has fallen a lot in the last 10-15 days. Investment banking was mixed bag. H D F C was down, but Motyal Oswal, B S C, Tata Investment, they were all up. Vedanta was the only red stock in metal pack. Pharma led from the front by Divis Lab. Only DRL and GlaxoSmithKline are not in green. Real estate stocks had a good outing. I talked about Suzlon's new order yesterday. It was not up yesterday. Maybe the news came after market hours. It was up five percent today. Titan back in green, up one point two percent. No trade day in the cash market today. I took some positions in FNO after a long time today. ATL was showing good momentum, so I traded in that. Reasonable profit for the day. But I am not doing much FNO these days. Time for the nugget section. Today we'll talk about Tata Power. Just as a disclaimer, I am an existing investor in Tata Power. It is a long-term holding in my portfolio, more than a year probably. Tata Power is India's largest vertically integrated power company. What it means for me is they are into power generation, power distribution, as well as power transmission, complete bouquet of services. That too diversified. They are into nuclear. They are into coal. They are into they are into solar. Nearly. all forms of energy production tata power does it this is a report for their q1 results 11.4 gigawatt they just added 2 gigawatt to it nearly which is a substantial addition close to 15% just for context india's power consumption the peak demand is somewhere close to 250 gigawatt right now and this is anticipated to grow to nearly 400 by the end of this decade this is what i was talking about generation transmission distribution this is thermal this is wind this is hydro waste solar total about 15 gigawatt one interesting element is they are not just in india they are spread across the world Tata Power also owns some coal mines in Indonesia. Now, revenue-wise, exponential graphs are what I like a lot. EPS is also having the same graph. However, EPS can change a lot because this is a very capex-hungry industry. So there may be times of one year, two year when capex is very high and interest payout becomes really high. The profit after tax numbers are looking even better than revenue. Return on equity has dipped a little off late. That's primarily because of the huge capex they are doing right now. Lot of interesting insights are available in their quarterly report. Do have a look if you want to invest in this company. So these are the big solar power players in terms of order book right now. Tata Power is double of SGVN. There is no one close to them right now. I don't know where Adani Energy is in terms of order booking. They are comparable in terms of market cap. This is the business update they gave in last quarter, which has just gone live with two gigawatt plus production. This will scale to four point three gigawatt very soon. Now these are all the subsidiaries of Tata Power: thermal generation, for example, renewables, transmission and distribution. This has also the discounts for Mumbai and Delhi, where Tata Power makes major money in the distribution in two of the largest metros in India. As India privatizes these discoms across tier two cities, this business will grow further. Only Tata Power will be the strongest contender there. The PE of Tata Power has gone up a bit, but I would attribute it to being that this is forward PE, not current PE. Market is anticipating good growth in the numbers, and that is why PE is around forty. After the pandemic low, EPS has been rising continuously, which is a good sign. 
Now PG of Tata Power is 0.52, NTPC 2.62, Power Grid 2.33, Adani Green 6, Adani Power is 0.17, JSW Energy 3.37, 8.44 Adani Energy. So these two companies looked reasonable from PG perspective in terms of investment. The SWOT for Tata Power. Power requires significant expertise and being an all-round player gives them the strength which is not there in any other company. In fact, Adani Group has different listed companies in different zones here. The scale of Tata and Tata Power is huge. The ratings for Tata Power have gone up recently. They can raise any money anytime from the market as well as from Tata Sons. Also, if raw material like say coal goes up, they can pass on the increase as tariff hike to the consumer anytime. In fact, whenever raw material prices go down, for example, coal is cheap since one year, the prices in India's domestic market never goes down. So right now, thermal companies are enjoying a significant margin. In terms of weakness, it is a high capex and long horizon investment scenario. It takes three years, four years, five years to set up a power plant. Till that time you pay interest, the money comes after that. Also, the significant contribution is with Adani Group. NTPC also is there, but it is a government company and it moves at its own pace. Now we all know that Adani Group has some special privileges and Tata Power may suffer on account of that in many, many deals. In terms of opportunities, demand in India is ever growing. The, the per capita power consumption in India is among the lowest. Summers are getting more and more hot. I believe till 2035, 2040, power demand will go up only. Also, they have international exposure. So that will be good. Threats could be crash in power prices. Here I'm not talking about raw material prices going up. It's about units of price getting cheaper. For example, subsidy on renewables gets reduced once there are significant people and capacity added. Also, if India becomes power surplus, then there could be a crash in power prices. That is where hopefully the duopoly will help the way it is helping the telecom sector right now. Also in telecom, at least you have an option to cancel a SIM and go to another provider. In your locality, if Tata Power is distributing power, even if they double the rate, you don't have an option of going to NTPC or Adani Group or for that matter, any PSU. Also, once the CAPEX part is reasonably done, a lot of money will be generated as cash in the balance sheet. That could lead to m &A, that could lead to good dividends. Also, like other Tata Group companies, if there is significant cash available, they could go for buybacks also, which will generate a lot of shareholder return. So I expect the company to generate significant shareholder returns in that 5 to 10 years to come. I don't see major threats to the business model right now. In fact, the debt also will keep on reducing. Tata Group in general has been reducing the debt across the board. That will lead to significant uptick in EPS like we have seen in other Tata companies like Tata Motors, Tata Steel. Hope this information was useful. Note this is only for educational purpose. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.